there are a few other fiqhi questions there. One of them, which, was, which uh, Abu Amr was referring to, which is, can I fast the six of Shawwal before making up fast? I'm not sure if Sheikh Yasser addressed this or not. It is, it is a legitimate ikhtilaf. It's a legitimate difference of opinion. So if you choose either opinion, it's fine, inshaAllah ta'ala. Uh, the, 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 the one that seems to have the strongest evidence to it is that the reward for fasting Ramadan is limited to the month of Ramadan, meaning that you have until the next year to make up your fast for Ramadan. The time, the restriction on the time is that you have all the way until next Ramadan, before next Ramadan to make up those fasts. Though you're encouraged to make them up as soon as possible. Whereas the six days of Shawwal are limited to Shawwal according to the majority opinion. It depends because in the Arabic language when the Prophet says Sitta to min Shawwal, six from Shawwal, it can mean Sitta to ibtida'an min Shawwal. It can mean starting from Shawwal throughout the year, meaning if you fast any six days in the year, or it can mean six days within the month of Shawwal. So the majority of opinion is that it's six days within the month of Shawwal carry a special reward. So the time for fasting those six days, the reward of it is limited, is restricted to the month of Shawwal. So what's the most balanced, what's the most balanced approach to this entire discussion? If you only missed a couple of days, one or two days, it's better, and you think that you'll be able to make them up before praying, before uh, fasting the six of Shawwal, then go ahead and do so. If you have a huge number of fasts to make up, and this is of course particularly for sisters usually, and that's where the example of Aisha radiallahu anha comes up, that Aisha radiallahu anha had fasts that she still owed from Ramadan, and she made them up in the Sha'ban of, you know, right before Ramadan. Meaning this Ramadan, she, she, missed, she would have missed a few fasts, she still had fast that she was making up in, in Sha'ban all the way until the month right before Ramadan when the next year came around. And the ulama said there is no way that Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha um, would, would, would miss out on the reward of something like this. Meaning that there was a general permission, there was a general uh, excuse and understanding amongst the companions of the Prophet sallam, to fast those days. Another example, by the way, Abdullah bin Abbas radiallahu ta'ala anhu, and though uh, it's not necessarily restricted to Shawwal, but the concept of fasting, a voluntary fast. Abdullah ibn Abbas radiallahu ta'ala anhu, uh, whose madhab is known as madhab at-tayassur, fiqh at-tayassur. He had a very lenient fiqh. Ibn Abbas radiallahu anhu was habr al-ummah, he was a scholar of this ummah, but his fiqh was extremely lenient, within acceptable bounds. He wasn't a progressive in the regressive sense. He was within, wherever there was ease, wherever there was flexibility in the sharia, he used to give it to the people. And he was the scholar of this ummah, and that's what a faqih does. He makes it easy for the people. But Ibn Abbas, عنه, when he used to travel in Ramadan, he used to break his fast. But when he used to travel, and it was a day of Ashura, or a day of Arafah, he'd keep his fast. So some of the people said to Ibn Abbas, عنه, عَجَبًا لَكُمْ يَا أَصْحَابَ رَسُولِ اللَّهِ you know, you companions of the Prophet ﷺ, sometimes you do things that are ajab, they're strange, like it doesn't make sense to us. You break your fast for an obligatory fast when you travel. But Ashura, Arafah, these voluntary days, you still fast them even when you travel. He said that's because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says about the fast of Ramadan, فَعِدَّةٍ مِنْ أَيَّامٍ أُخَرْ You still have the chance to make them up later on. But the reward of Ashura and Arafah are restricted here. Now, another question comes, and this is the last thing I'm going to give you guys, because this can go all day, all night, the fiqh uh, uh, implications here. But another question comes, what if a woman, for example, uh, fasts, you know, her, her tradition, her habit is to fast, Ashura, Arafa, Ayyam al the middle days of the month, Mondays and Thursdays, but at that time, she's unable to fast uh, for, her, for her reasons. What does she do? Does she make up, or does she get the reward? Barakallah fiqh, the Prophet ﷺ said that if a person was accustomed to doing something when they were resident, when they, when they were at home, and they, weren't, and they were healthy, if they were accustomed to that, and a sickness or travel prevented them from doing that deed, Allah would write them down the full reward of that deed, tamma, with, with absolutely no deficiency. So it would be as if she would have fasted that day anyway. Allah would give her the full reward without taking anything from it. There's zero deficiency in it. So the point is, dear brothers and sisters, Allah Azzawajal presents a lot of opportunities to us and Allah is merciful in the opportunities He presents to us. So inshallah ta'ala, uh, let's make the habit, you know, to, to, to try to fast these days anyway, you know, starting with myself, now that we're in the habit of fasting. You know, subhanAllah, the day was so long 
right? And we thought we wouldn't be able to make it through this Ramadan. But, you know, you get accustomed to it. So while you're accustomed to it, try to keep the habit of fasting, inshallah ta'ala, and particularly tomorrow, inshallah ta'ala, uh, which is Thursday. If you can combine the intention for, uh, for fasting the 6th of Shawwal, as well as fasting Thursday, as well as, as, well as Ayyam al-Bil, then that's good. All right, last fiqhi issue. Friday and Saturday. Are they prohibited to fast or not? Is it prohibited to fast Friday or Saturday or not? To fast Friday alone is severely disliked. To fast Saturday alone is severely disliked to a point of prohibition from the Prophet Okay? To fast them alone. However, when the reason for fasting those days existed before those days came, then, it's no, then the prohibition and the dislike is removed. Meaning what? Uh, if I couldn't fast tomorrow, but I can fast Friday, it's better, there's no doubt, it's better to add Saturday to it. But if I decided to fast it alone, on the basis that it's from Ayyam al bil it's from the white days, then inshallah it's permissible. Why? Because the Prophet ﷺ recommended Sliyam Dawood, the fasting of Dawood, which is to fast alternate days. So obviously if you're fasting alternate days, that means every week you're going to fast either Friday or Saturday. So as long as it's part of a habit or there is an established reason to fast that day before then, just like if it was Ashura or Arafah, then it's permissible inshallah ta'ala. So I know we just covered a lot of issues, so hopefully we're good for Dhul Hijjah. We don't have to do anything for Dhul Hijjah uh, either. Any questions? Yeah. No, you don't have to make up a voluntary deed. Iddatun min ayam and ukhar is for Ramadan that you make up days in Ramadan. And the second thing is if you miss the Ramadan fast, you have to make it up the next year or you can make it up in subsequent years as well. If you if you missed if you missed the fast of Ramadan, then you become you know, it, it, it becomes a form it becomes sinful to delay it beyond the next year unless there is a very legitimate excuse. And usually that excuse exists for women, not for men. Right? So unless it's you had this abnormal amount due to pregnancy or breastfeeding and no, not men dealing, you know, with pregnancy. But <laughs> but if a, if a woman was pregnant or went through that type of stuff and she had many days to make up, then that's fine. But for men, uh, it becomes sinful. And if you had to do so, then there's a kafara that's due. Uh, and you, you also pay the fidya as well as making up the day. You also pay uh, a fidya for that day. Allah. Yeah. Uh, the Siyam of Dawud do we know from the Indian history of the Sahaba or anybody the fasting of Dawood uh, do we know of any of the Sahaba that followed it? Yes. Abdullah ibn Amr ibn As anhu, who the Prophet gave that prescription to. We also know Abu Talha uh, anhu, who was the uh, stepfather of Anas ibn Malik anhu. and it's been narrated you know, from, from Jabir anhu, and some other companions as well. So yes, there were companions that took that prescription of fasting every other day. Yeah. Okay, so the question is, how is how is it applicable in our days? The restriction or, or the, the um, taking a day off when you travel and fasting, because now traveling is quite comfortable. It doesn't change the ruling at all, according to any of the ulama. The ruling on traveling and fasting is that it's up to you. The Prophet ﷺ says, "Man sha'a and and yasum, yasum. Whoever wants to keep fasting can do so, and whoever wants to break his fast can do so." So, to some people, it's not that comfortable, even if you're in a plane and it's you know. It's still difficult to fast, so that's their completely their. The, it's up to them. So, uh, the Prophet ﷺ did not assign uh, the or, or Allah or the Messenger ﷺ. Neither of them um, gave the permission to break your fast when you're traveling, only if it's a hardship. Like mashaqqa is not mentioned in the equation. Hardship is not mentioned in the equation in any of those uh, you know ruchas that are given. So it's open. It's still open to us. Yeah. So what if there's like a time zone difference? For instance, Sahur is like in Texas and com uh, the time zone between California or Texas. Would you do Sahur according to your local time here in Dallas? Or you do Sahur and you fast and you pray according to where you are. So if you're flying to the West Coast, for example, and you're losing time then, and you want to keep fasting, you've got to wait till Maghrib in the West Coast. If you're flying to the East Coast, you cut an hour out. Good for you. Right? It's fine. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has opened it up, inshallah. It's, it's okay. Uh, but yeah, it's according to where you're at. Allah
All right, last, last question. I'll give it to Furqan, and then you can ask me personally, Jalia. Yeah. No, you don't have to make up. If you missed the white day, you don't have to make it up. Yeah, so you can fast any one of the white days exclusively. Right? But the best sunnah is for all of us, inshallah. If we can make it a habit to fast all three of those days, then that's good, inshallah. Allah Alam. Jazakumullah khair. Subhanakallah. Muhammadik. Ashadu Allah. Ila Lant. Astaghfiruk. Wa Atubu Alaik. Oh, wait, 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 wait. Everyone, stop, 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 stop. Stop. Please stop. Brother Shakid has a quick announcement, inshallah. I'm sorry. It's not going to be.